What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm out here again at Altus Performance. It's been a while since I've seen Cameron McCormick, but we're out here once again. And you just got done with my wife's first ever golf lesson. You need to check it out. It was amazing. I'll put it up here and the link will be in the description down below. It's incredible, especially for a lot of you guys that are starting golf or maybe you even want to try to get your wife or girlfriend into it. It's a great first video to watch and get some amazing tips on how to get better without getting too frustrated. So I thought for our video, what would be good instead of going and kind of working on my game, I asked on the community page, hey, what are some things you guys want to learn? What are some things you guys want to get better at? And I thought, you know, we got the man himself right here. Let's bust it through. Let's try to get him and get your guys' golf game back on track. First one is from Arthur Lelu. He wants to know, what should I think standing over the ball on the tee box? Very little to nothing. Okay. I'm happy for a player to have one swing key, have that swing key rehearsed back behind the ball as part of your pre-shot routine, and then direct all of your attention, all of your focus on being intentional in what you're trying to do with a golf ball. Roughly where it's gonna start, the shape you're trying to play, be very target-oriented and flight-oriented. You wanna demonstrate? I like it. Sweet. I'm always a fan of less is better, right? Mm -hmm. And precise when you're actually thinking. Yeah, we're trying to subtract, not add, as we're standing over the ball. Subtracting swing thoughts, one swing key feel, should be hip rotation for Brody. Yeah. And then right now he's shifting into, I'm target aware, ball flight aware. Nice. Clearly I can't get inside your head to mm -hmm. know how well you were target oriented, mm -hmm. but what I can see is I can see a really well defined pre-shot routine mm -hmm. that is, there's my movement, there's my target, and I'm going to execute through that target. What are your thoughts on guys that kind of get over the ball and it looks like they're almost not able to commit? They're taking eight practice swings sure. and they stand over the yeah. ball. Like, what are well, your thoughts on like beginner golfers, what should they be doing? I think of two things when you bring that up. The first is that they're trying to do too much. They haven't probably spent enough time in practice to ingrain those things to where they're intuitive and they're just automatic. So the first is go back to the practice team and make sure that you've got command of those movements you're trying to ingrain. And the second is they've got to be able to shift to play. When you're on the golf course, you're not trying to make a perfect swing. You're trying to hit better shots. Shift that mindset into play. And what's sometimes effective in order to force, like a computer needs a force restart sometimes, is a cadence in your head, a three, two, one, and as soon as you hit one, you guaranteed have to start that swing. Give it a shot. I love it. So we have a question from Jeter Gowen. I hope I'm saying your name right. He wants to know, what's the best way to increase shaft lean at impact? Oh, that's an easy one. It's called the T-drive. So what you do is you take a T and you lean it into the ground. Zoom in really, really tight now. So what we want, we've got this T angled at about a 15 degree relative to the ground, but the club's loft is 30 degrees. This is a six iron. So what I'm asking Brody to do is I'm asking Brody to make the club face look like the head of a hammer to drive that T into the ground. So this creates a picture of, okay, in order to do that, I've got to get that handle leading, mm. don't I? So we practice it once, which I'll get you to do here in a second. Then we put a ball right behind it and we create that same image. We're mm. just trying to drive that T this, this time just beyond the ball. Beautiful. Is you're going to start making driving divots and don't think of them as too much if you're a player that needs to develop more forward shaft lean. I'd rather see too much divot than not enough. Right before I go, I just like yeah, doing that rehearsing. quick little movement just to feel it. I love it. And that was about head high to a grasshopper, which means you had a ton of forward shaft lean. Try it at home, you're sure to start leaning that shaft hitting more solid shots and they're gonna go further. So be prepared for that. Cassie Lamb has a great question. He wants to know, I keep hitting the ball on the toe of all my shots. Yep. How do I fix that? Painful experience. Yeah. Actually sometimes hurts if it's cold weather like it is here in Dallas right now. <laughs> Let's treat this alignment rod like it's the center back of the ball and I want you to align at the black tip. So Cassidy, essentially what's happening and for a variety of reasons, and I'm gonna give you one specific reason that likely it does happen, is the club isn't returning to the center back of the ball, right? We're talking about this stick being the back of the ball. The club returns too close to you, and in all likelihood, what happens, either your body's falling back away from this target line or the center of the ball, or your arms, bring your arms in closer to you, you're flexing your elbows just a little bit too much as you're approaching impact, maybe trying to avoid ground contact. Mm. But I want you to lean into that ground contact, and I want you to do the following drill, which teaches you 
to return the club actually further away from you than you otherwise would. So here's how it works. It's called jump the fence. We take an alignment rod, and what Brody's gonna do is he's gonna start with the club on the same side of the stick as he's standing. He's gonna make a golf swing, he's gonna come back on down, and he's gonna land the club on the other side. In order to do that, what he has to do is he has to prevent his body from falling away from the ball. He also has to extend his arms some amount to make the club move to the other side of the stick. Give it a shot, mate. Jump the fence. Here we go. Beautiful. So you can see he started with the club on one side, he landed with the club on the other side, and this will most definitely be a surefire way the players can solve for toe contact. We're gonna have a little two-piecer here. We got a question from, I think it's Rajit. He wants to know, how can you control spin on approach shots from the fairway? And then the other one that's gonna be mixed in is from Miguel Munez, who says how to create more spin on shorter chip shots. I guess the assumption in controlling spin from the fairway is that player has too much spin. That's a really easy solution. It's about controlling the amount of spin loft you have. Okay, so the two components of spin. What's the angle? The club's traveling down. Think of a plane coming into land. The steeper that plane lands, bad things happen. In this case, the bad thing that we're trying to prevent is spin. So the steeper that club's coming into impact with a lofted club, that's called spin loft. The greater the angle difference between the loft of the club, <coughs> so in this case, I've got a 50 degree, we've got a lot of loft in the club and the attack angle is massively down, it's going to create a lot of spin. If we've got a less lofted club and I land the plane, have less of attack angle, we're going to have less spin. So, the answer to the question, how do I reduce spin if that's the problem, is I feel like the club's coming in lower to the ground to impact and I feel like I've got a little bit more forward shaft left. Or, alternatively, if the problem is, man, I'm not spinning enough, I need to create more spin, then we have to be steeper with a little bit less handle leads in fact. So let's do both of them, shall we? Okay, so this one is less spin. Less spin. So what I want is I want you to feel like the club is cruising really close to the ground. And then shaft. With a lot of shaft and beautiful. Okay. Pitching wedge, I'm gonna guess it's about 10, maybe 11,000 RPM. Anything less than 10,000 RPM would be a really low spin pitching wedge. You might have just done it. Spin rate oh my 77. Gosh, 700. And 28. Well done. That's a super low spin pitching wedge. So I've got the perfect role model here who has command of what the cl golf club's doing to the ball. Now, here's what I want to see. I want to see the opposite. Okay. I want to see steeper angle of attack, and I want to see you let loft move back on the club. Yep. Exactly. So less forward shaft lean, steeper angle of attack. And that is zooming high. You've probably added about three to 4,000 RPM of spin, would be my guess. I'm gonna guess 10,500? Just under 10, 9,600. Okay. 9,600. Still, you changed spin, 2,000 RPM. How does that look on the green? The 9,000, 9,600 RPM is gonna hit and start to move backwards. That 7,700 is gonna hit and stop really quick. It's not gonna move backwards at all. So, depending on your spin problem from the fairway, you now have your solution. The other thing just to add on to the spin thing, guys, is wind. It's really, really windy in Dallas, and if you've ever played and you're a high spin player, you're gonna struggle a lot in the wind. Sure. So being able to control that spin is not only just for being able to bring the ball back or not, but I've found it's really effective when you're playing in the wind, for sure. being able to reduce that spin. Absolutely. We're gonna move over now to short game and chipping. Some people wanna now learn how to add the spin. We see on the tour all the time, these guys 30 yards, 20 yards off the green, they're hitting these chip shots and the ball's just boop, sticking. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, same rules apply. We've got a lofted club. We can either be steep in the angle of attack or shallow in the angle of attack. We've also got another option. Given that we do have a lofted club, we can open or mm. create more, more face loft, or we can create less face loft by turning the face closed and leaning the handle forward just that little bit more. So let's hit a chip shot that travels in the air to the white stick, which is about 20 yards in front of us. Okay. So it's a relatively long carry chip shot. Let's try and take spin off a chip shot as if we're trying to hit a shot that hits the ground and continues to release. So we're gonna put the ball back in our stance, but again, just like that Philly approach shot, we're just gonna try and enter impact with the club really low to the ground and that handle de-lofted, because that's gonna take spin away with the same one as the club. It's a little bit far in the air. From yeah, 25 yards. I don't have the feel yet, guys, <laughs> at all. But spin rate's 4,100 RPM. 
Now we're going to do the opposite for a player that needs to hit the same trajectory of chip shot. So if we're talking about a chip, which would be a low trajectory shot, what we're going to do is now we're going to turn loft on the club face. Maybe most people think of this as opening the club face and aiming further to the right. But in fact, when you're dealing with a lot of loft, it really just turns the loft to the sky. It gives us a much greater chance of creating a lot of spin. Now we're going to increase the angle of attack with that lofted face. It should produce a pretty low trajectory shot. 20 yards. Beautiful. Got a little bit far. Distance in. still terrible, guys. <laughs> Good spin rates. Yeah. 7,000 RPM. And really, as far as like what I was thinking in my head, it's not much. It's not it's much. really not much to change. Yes. Yeah. Not much to change for a value of 3,000 RPM and a chip shot. How would that react on the green? That would come to a really quick stop once again. Perfect. We have made it outside, guys. We're now on the incredible chipping area facility out here at Altus Performance here in Trinity Forest. And we're going to talk about two things out of the bunker. The first one that we're going to go with is Zachary Green. He wants to know what's the best way to generate the most spin out of the bunker. That's an easy one. Should we start with that now? Yeah, let's, let's knock that one out right now. Okay, here we go. So spin out of the bunker is controlled by friction. And that's the friction the ball feels as the club and the sand are squeezing against the back cover of the ball. So what happens is your club comes down and it pushes sand against the ball. The club face contacts the golf ball and there's a small layer of sand and that sand is a cutting, what's that material is what we'll call it, mm -hmm. a cutting material that causes the cover to cut and causes a lot of spin. The problem comes when our club enters the sand, let's say the golf ball sitting here, too far back and there's more sand pushed and the sand doesn't stick together. So the net of this is in order to create spin from the bunker, what you must do is you must land your club really close to the back edge of the ball. And I know what most of you are thinking out there. Well, that is a dangerous situation. I might send the ball <laughs> sailing over the green. Well, that's the net of it, right? That's how good you have to be to, in order to create spin from the bunker. So let's get the big guy a shot. Here we go. So I stamped a line in the sand. And what I'm asking Brody to do is I'm asking Brody to hit the sand with his club on the downswing right at the front edge of that crease. If he does this correctly, the ball should spin quite a lot. Did nice. One, two. Yep. Kind of a pretty quick stop. So as we inspect here closer, it's more the middle. His entry middle point back. was kind of like the middle back of the line. Yep. That pushed an additional inch of sand between club face and ball and took away some of the potential spin he could have seen. So let's do one more, mate. I love marking lines in the sand behind your ball because it gives you feedback as well. It tells you how well you did. Better. And that one did stop quicker, didn't it? Yeah, it was almost, you can see, yeah. Yeah. it was almost a little bit in front, like maybe exactly. a half inch. Exactly. Yeah. So control how far your club lands into the sand behind the ball and you control how much spin you can create. AJ Usi, he wants to know how to hit probably the most difficult bunker shot, especially for amateurs. It's wicked hard. A bunker shot with a buried plugged lie. Yep. Yeah. Like this one I've got behind you. I, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even I see didn't it. See. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, this is exactly the one. The rub on buried bunker shots is in order to get the club beneath the ball to make the ball go up, the club itself has to go down deeper into the sand. So there's a couple of ways that we can do that. We can turn more dig on the club face by, if you can address this one towards that second flag, we can turn more dig on the club face by turning the face in. Now sometimes that causes the ball to launch a little bit left, so be aware of that. You might need to aim a bit further to the right. And when that happens, can I borrow the club? Mm -hmm. What you're going to do is you're going to use more of the leading edge to cut down into the sand. Therefore the club will continue to submerge down into the sand, getting beneath the ball that's really deep and using the loft to get the ball out. The other way would be set up conventionally with more loft on the face or quote unquote face open and be much steeper in hinge. Bring it up to your collarbone and then just hammer down right behind the ball and try and leave the club head down in the sand. The deeper the club head goes into the mm. sand, as long as it doesn't go into the sand any further back than maybe six inches and the ball's gonna pop up. Let's give it a shot for the second way because that's okay. the more conventional way to yeah. hit very bunker shots. So open club face, hinge steep, chop, and chop, leave it in and there. then leave it in. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha. Go it. in. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it's that. It's not that easy, actually, but.
I and mean, then, you get a good one every once in a while. But job. yeah, so you have two options there, guys, and tough shot made easy, obviously, after some practice. So big thanks to Cameron Cormick for uh, giving these awesome little tips. Make sure you guys follow their YouTube channel. It'll be right down below in the description. It'll also be somewhere at the end of the video as well. Subscribe. They have so many good little goodies and tips over there that go into these things a little bit more in depth. Also on their Instagram, they have awesome drills that I honestly steal all the time to go out and practice. So check out their Instagram as well. And if you haven't seen Kelsey's first golf lesson, it's a must watch. Thank you so much for your time. And I uh, can't wait until the next one, man. It's always fun yeah. out here. Awesome. Altus performance, baby. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Let's go. Sick. Nice.